gentlemen, I'm your host, Truman Bradley. You know, a man is supposed to be able to lift a load equal to his own weight. Well, some men can. But any of us can do it this way. This is the principle of the lever embedded by man thousands of years ago. Or any of us can do it this way with the pulley and the block and fall. This was invented by the Greeks centuries before the birth of Christ. Or like this with the counterbalance weight. Likewise invented by the Greeks. Note the improvement over the original model. Also watch the ease with which one weight lifts the other. But it took modern man with his power machinery to develop ways to lift many times his own weight without lifting a finger, merely by pushing his finger. In this machine age, we're getting to depend more and more on devices like these. But here's a social order which reached its full development millions of years before ours that functions without any machinery whatsoever. Yes, they're ants, the kind you see in your garden. Here they have excavated a complex dwelling out of hard earth with no other power than that of their own muscles. Nature has endowed them with tremendous strength. This little character is lugging a burden over 10 times his own weight. Think of yourself lifting that kind of a load. Your piano, for instance, or your car. It's obvious the ants have some muscular property we lack. Will we ever have it? In recent years, science has made important strides in solving the mysteries of muscular chemistry. Someday, the researchers may come up with surprising results. This is the theme of the story you're about to see. Lincoln Place, an alley behind a fifth-rate hotel on the south side of town. A heated argument suddenly flares into violence. The result? One of the most perplexing homicides of the year. the right room? 167. This is it. Want to borrow something? Uh, no, nothing. I want to see Mr. Reynolds. Mr. William Reynolds? Oh, most everybody who comes in wants to borrow something. Mr. Reynolds should be here any minute. 
Well, what do you do here? Repair TV sets? You're not serious, of course. This is Professor Avery's lab. So they told me at the office. Uh, what's he trying to do? Investigate the electrical potential of nerve tissue. He's one of the top men in the field. And uh, Mr. Reynolds? The professor's assistant, holder of a biology fellowship, and a very nice man. I see. Professor Avery? Yes, sir. Mr. Reynolds? Yes? I'm a police officer. Turn around, face the wall, put your hands above your head. Come on, Reynolds, move. Lean, you know how. Okay, you can turn around. What's this all about? Give me a rundown on yesterday. Yesterday I was here. What were you doing last night? Well, I came back here. When and for how long? Well, from about a quarter of eight until a little past ten. To do what? To conduct a seminar on the motor nerves of the guinea pig. Can you prove that? Well, yes. There. There's ten students who were in this room with me the whole time. Uh, an attendance roll, eh? That's right. Here, take it. You can check the whole roll. Every one of them signed it. I see they did. It looks okay, but I'll still check it. Do you mind telling me what this is all about? Man by the name of Eric Munson. Know him? Yes, what about him? Last night between the hours of 9 and 9.30, he went to an alley behind the apartment house where he lives and got himself beat up. Strangled. He's dead. Munson strangled? That's right. I can't believe it. He was done with bare hands and brute strength. And you suspect me? He was a giant. He could have broken me in half. You could have gotten somebody else to do it for you. No, I didn't. We found a letter in Munson's apartment addressed to the Dean of Science, telling about your record. The two counts of auto theft. Oh, that was years ago, when he was just a boy. I know. He was shaking you down, wasn't he? Well, he was trying to. Nobody ever told him how little assistant professors make. If I may put in a word, sir, I'm this young man's mentor, so to speak. He has spent six hard years erasing his earlier mistakes. He's turning into a brilliant biochemist, the best to come along in a decade. I'll vouch for him 100%. I'm sorry, Professor, but we have to run down every possible lead. I understand, but I assure you that Mr. Reynolds would never resort to anything like what you suggest. He's a decent, law-abiding man. I'm glad to hear it. Sorry if I interrupted your work. Oh, Sergeant. Uh, one other thing. About that letter Munson wrote. Yes, what about it? The trustees of this university are very sensitive about adverse publicity. Is there any way the letter can be kept out of the newspapers? Well, it isn't easy. This boy will lose his fellowship if the letter is published. Isn't there something you can do? I'll see. Thanks. Now, you play straight with me, Reynolds. If you know anything, or if you find out anything, call me. I will. I'm sorry if I upset you, miss. I didn't mean to. I think you can forget about this, Bill. It's just a routine checkup. Uh, Paula, I'm going to 165 and then to the faculty club. Yes, sir. Professor. Yes? I want to know something. Yes? That uh, seminar last night. What about it? You scheduled it purposely, didn't you? Purposely? So I'd have an alibi. Why should I do that? Because of our talk yesterday. I told you Munson was blackmailing me, and I suggested you get a new assistant. You said no. You've been waiting 20 years for somebody with my ability. Now, the next thing I know, Munson is dead, and I've got an alibi. You're imagining things, Reynolds. You told Sergeant Cox that Munson was a giant. Now, how could I possibly have harmed him? All right, Professor. If you don't want to open up to me, that's your privilege. But I owe you a great deal, and I can't turn my back no, on you. No, no, you don't owe me a thing. You went before the board, and you talked them into granting me my fellowship. Purely selfish. I need your assistance. Not really. Many people could do the job I'm doing. Yes, but I need someone capable of taking over, if necessary. Taking over? Why? I don't want to discuss it now. You're not ill, are you? What's the matter? Confound it, I don't want to discuss it now. I'm not ill, Bill. I have another project. I want to devote all of my time to it. Professor, 
I want you to know you can count on me for anything. Homicide. Professor Avery is in the library, and Bill Reynolds is in bio 165. Thanks, and I'm happy right here. Well, go on. If you have questions, ask them. Okay. Where do you keep the zoo? Zoo? Yeah, the rabbits, guinea pigs, monkeys. Hi, Bill. Look who's back. Hello, Sergeant. Hi. Miss Kennedy and I were just discussing the animals you keep here for the experiments. Oh, we don't use animals, just nerve tissue. And nerve. Where can I find Professor Avery? He's in the bio lab down the hall. Show me. Just how do animals figure into this? Well, suppose you tell me. We don't keep animals. Professor, Sergeant Cox wants to see you. You have a permit to keep animals for experimental purposes. I looked it up this morning. It covers guinea pigs, rabbits, lambs, monkeys, and certain non-poisonous reptiles. That is correct. Uh, I'd like to see where you keep them. Well, this isn't the most convenient time to... Uh, professor... I've gone to a good deal of trouble to keep that letter out of the paper. I think I deserve your cooperation. I suppose so. This way, Sergeant. Hey, Fred, come here a second, will you? Fred, give me a hand with this, will you, over to the scale? laboratory where for decades scientists have investigated some of nature's most perplexing questions a police detective seeks the answer to a different kind of problem one posed by a homicide where the clues point to a man who is not only physically incapable of committing the crime but who wasn't even there what was in there a monkey I can't understand the window Somebody wanted that monkey awful bad. Why? I have no idea. Well, I do. The boys at the crime lab went over Eric Munson's clothing. They found five animal hairs. One from a rabbit, one from a lamb, and three from a monkey. There's a tie up here with the killing of Eric Munson. What is it? Sorry, I don't know. Well, maybe we can find out. That cage sure did it the hard way. Why? I don't know. Well, maybe we can find that out, too. I'll expect you gentlemen to be in town till further notice. Is that clear? That monkey wasn't stolen. It escaped. We've got to hurry and find it. Escaped? How could a monkey bend those bars? I'll tell you later. Wait. Here, take this. Well, what about one for you? I, uh, I know how to handle them. Well, 
I've been all the way to the park and back. I saw dogs, cats, pigeons, squirrels. No monkey. I've covered the residential district to the river. It's useless, I guess. Hello? Sergeant Cox, please. This is urgent. Professor Avery. Sergeant, about that missing monkey, I... Oh, you did. Well, that was very wise. But I think you'd better add something to that bulletin. The monkey is under the influence of experimental drugs and is extremely dangerous. Give your men orders to shoot it on sight. Yeah, please do that. I'll be here at my lab, the one in the basement. Yes, yes. Goodbye. No, Bill. It wasn't the monkey who killed Munson. It was you. But how? This. For years, I've been working on chemical factors which affect muscle efficiency. And I stumbled on a new scientific principle. I won't go into what it is right now, except to say that it's not a hormone or a stimulating drug. But watch. Will you hold this? Certainly. In this tube is the muscle unit from the leg of a frog. Its normal lifting capacity is 100 grams. Now watch. Now I'll double the weight. Will you open the flask, please? Certainly. And give an injection. Now watch. Well, that's fantastic. I'll use the same amount of weight over here. In this tube is the muscle unit from the foreleg of a lamb. Now watch. You mean to say that a frog is stronger than a lamb? With my compound, yes. This is one of the most important discoveries of the century. But unfortunately, one of the most dangerous. The moment I discovered this compound, I realized it had to be kept secret. Yes, it could upset a lot of things. Make a champion out of a third-rate pug, put a claiming horse in the winner's circle of the Kentucky Derby. Quacks and fly-by-night drug companies would have a field day with it. How much work do you think is involved? Possibly years. Too much for one man. That's why I began grooming you to take over my work. Then came the moment when I forgot the traditions of science, the lessons of Pasteur and Leeuwenhoek. I let my fury at what Munson was doing to you destroy the discipline that has guided me all these years. I succumbed to temptation, decided to test my compound on myself. But it might have killed you. I took precautions, subjected the monkey to a powerful dose. His heart, blood pressure, and respiration showed no harmful effect. Appetite remained good, no swelling of the joints, blood, dilation of the pupils, saliva, all remained normal, so I thought it was safe. And then you saw Munson. My intention was merely to frighten him with the only argument a bully can understand, brute strength. But you planned it. You even arranged an alibi for me. I wanted to take every precaution. If force became necessary, I didn't want you to be held responsible. And then you lost control. My nervous system wasn't prepared to cope with such power. It still isn't. So what are we going to do? I don't like the way Cox keeps coming back. Bill, not reporting me to the police makes you an accessory after the fact. They will make you pay Professor and... Avery, I don't care what they do to me. It's you and your work. I'm going to give myself up. But I need time, time to bring you up to date on the project. You mean you're going to turn it over to me? Yes, Bill. I won't hold you long, if at all. You're going to have to finish it for me. And we'd better get busy. If Sergeant Cox finds out what happened before I tell him, I want you to be able to carry on alone. But Professor Avery... Come, Bill, we must hurry. These uh, show muscle reaction to 1%, 5%, and 50% solutions. There seems to be a more instantaneous reaction at 5%. Yes. Yeah. Gentlemen. Yes, Sergeant, what is it? It's time for you to start leveling with me, Professor. This is Mr. Lewis of the police laboratory. 
He's proven that the animal hairs found on Eric Munson's clothing came from this laboratory. Comparison microscope photos show the cellular structure in the hairs match identically. That's no surprise. Munson was here the day before he was killed. This is where he tried to blackmail Reynolds. What do you think? Possible. I'm sure this place is full of hairs. Okay, so Munson picked the hairs up here. You were conducting a seminar at the time of the killing. Then why have the two of you been covering up at every turn? Because of the work we're doing here, Sergeant. Many research projects are kept secret. Why? To prevent premature, irresponsible, and possibly dangerous exploitation of their end products. What is the dangerous end product you're working on here? Hormone derivatives. All right, gentlemen. You know all the answers. But uh, there may be more questions. Hello? Oh, Sergeant Cox. Yes? For you. Sergeant Cox speaking. Uh-huh. But where? Got it. Be there right away. The monkey. Found in the storage room of a supermarket. Dead. Dead? Yeah, come on. No skull fracture, no wounds, no evidence of poison. What killed her? I think I know. Feel this. Thorax, hard as a rock. It's petrified. Death was caused by severe constriction of the muscles around the heart. You know what you're saying, Professor? It was the compound. I injected myself approximately eight hours after... The... You know the truth, Sergeant? Yes. You killed Munson. But I don't know how. The formula is simple. One part chemistry, one part anger, one part... Uh, uh. Professor, you better get an ambulance. <laughs> get an ambulance, quick. Uh, pain. <laughs> Easy, Professor. Don't worry. You'll manage better than I could. You're younger, just as dedicated. <clears throat> but remember, take the time to be positive. And though you'll find the log of this in, in my desk, injection of three cc's at 4 p.m. on Tuesday. Onset of heart reaction at... Uh, at approximately 11.30 Thursday. The action is more rapid than the monkey. Check the significance of the blood pressure, the age, RH factor, height and weight. I will. <clears throat> Spasm of leg muscles at... At 1.58 a.m. Also constriction of neck, shoulder and jaw. Bill and all this work. Remember, our real power is not in our physical strength, but in our ability to live at peace with our neighbors. Severe constriction of thorax. At, at 1.59. A loss of feeling in, in, in the extremities. Death at 2 a.m. Fortunately, this was only a story. It hasn't happened. But it illustrates what could happen when man tries to equal in a few years what took nature many millions of years to accomplish in the evolution of the ant.
I'll be back in just a moment. I hope you enjoyed our story. We'll be back with you a week from today with another exciting adventure from the world of fiction and science. Until then, this is your host, Truman Bradley, saying, see you next week. <laughs>